In this video, I'm going to help you to get started with homework 3. There are two parts of the homework. The first part is this again, and the second part is pixel to pixel. Both of these homework require you to do some training. So we need to download the data set and we need some GPU. It is possible to do this homework without GPU and on a CPU, but it is not recommended. So if you don't have an access to a GPU already, you can use Colab or using Cargo resource to do so. So I'm going to give you an example for uh, using Colab. But before that, let's download the dataset first. So you can find the link to the dataset in the description of our homework. So here is the link and you can see the repo of the FFHQ dataset. We are only going to use the thumbnails of the dataset. So you don't need to download the whole dataset. So you can click the link to see the files of the dataset. There will be 70,000 image with resolutions 128 by 128. So one way to download the dataset is using the web user interface. And you can see that there is a download right here. The Google Drive will pack the image files into a zip file first before you can download it. So it takes some time. Another way to download the dataset is using the download script provided by the repo. So here is a description of how to use the download script. There's options so that you can download the thumbnails only. However, because of the traffic limitation of Google Drive and the popularity of this repo, chances are you are not be able to download the files by using this script. The web user interface is still working. So another way to do so is to use rcron. So you can see um, I have installed the rcron here. And I have already configured the Google Drive setting. So uh, first of all, you should install the, the, the Akron so you can find out the full instruction of how to install it on various platforms. But beware of that there are different versions provide, provided in different platforms. I'm using the latest one. That is, you can see the green one here and there. So I'm actually uh, working on a Ubuntu system. The Ubuntu system does not provide it the latest version yet. So I'm actually install it using the snap. And to configure the account with Google Drive, you can simply search config, Akron config Google Drive. And you can find the full instruction. I'm using my own API key, but you can configure it without the API key. It will use a public provided API key to download all these things. And after you already install and configure the Akron, I have provided the command line so that you can use this command line to download the dataset from the Google Drive. Okay, so after you have downloaded the dataset, then you can work with this dataset and do the training. But you need GPU. You can actually do the training without GPU and on CPU, but it is not recommended because the whole purpose of this homework is help you to get a feeling, to fine tune, to adjust the model so that the model can work. But people usually don't train this kind of things on CPU. So if you are training these things on a CPU, you are literally living on a different scale of time. So everything you do is not typical. You won't get the right feeling 
of how to actually fine tune or adjust the model. So if you really don't have a GPU, you can use a GPU provided by Kaggle, uh, per perhaps by Hugging Face or by Google Colab. So I'm giving you an example of using Google Colab. So first of all, um, let's open a Google Colab drive. So I'm going to open a new notebook right here. So it takes a while. And you can change your runtime to a GPU. I'm using a paid version of Colab, so I have um, many different choices of uh, the GPUs, but um, you may use the T4 GPU, uh, so you can use the T4 GPU here. So let me just use the T4 GPU. The next thing is to download the dataset. Fortunately, because both Google Drive and Google Colab are the product from Google company, so they can actually integrate pretty well. So you can uh, actually link these files in your um, Google Drive, you, in your own Google Drive. Uh, let me see it. You can find the here, the share uh, here, and find the share, and maybe not share. Let me see if it work. No, no, not share. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay, organize. You can find it here. Organize and add shortcut, and adding a shortcut to one of your uh, folders. I'm linking it in my work. I have already done it. So um, let me go back to the Colab. Colab has an option to mount the Google Drive. So you can see here's a button right here, mount drive. Just click here and do some and follow the instruction and you can mount the Google Drive to your Colab. So let's wait a, a while for the Colab to actually mount the Google Drive. Okay, so it already mounted here. So you can see the drive and uh, it is in my, my drive and I put it in a folder of work and you can see the thumbnail files right here. All of these things. So let me work on the collab for a while and I, I'll go back to my remote machine. But before that, let me, let's work on the collab because this is something that everybody can use it. So let me import torch to see whether torch actually works right here. So, okay, the torch actually works. So, um, and we need PIL, we put image, and we don't need this one from passlib. Uh, this is my usual workflow to, uh, I prefer use pass. Some people doesn't like it, but I prefer to use pass. Okay, so we need these things to get it started. First of all, we should exam our data. So let me um, first use pass to, so what is the pass name exactly? My drive, drive, my drive. So it's a little bit complicated, but there's a good feature, a very convenient feature to actually copy the pass. So I'm copy pass right here. And, uh, I don't need this one. Okay, so this is my image root. So let me get a list of all the possible images. It is suggesting me to use a LS, but I'm not familiar with LS. 
Okay, it doesn't have an alias because I, I don't know it has provided. The method I'm going to use is grope. I can grope all the JPEG files, but I believe they are PNG files. And because they are not immediately under the list folder, they are under subfolders. I do this uh, trick to retrieve all files in all subfolders. So this is how to get all files in subfolders. This is a generator, so uh, would be more convenient if we uh, convert it into a list and see the first one. This is definitely not efficient, especially if the generator provides a lot of components. But uh, 70,000 is still something that we can easily manage. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to actually see this image. So I use image open to, to see I can actually read the image. Okay, good. Mm, maybe I can check another one. Okay, good. So we got the images. And let's check the length of, let, let me just call this images. So we can use it later. It is a little bit slow compared to my machines, local machines. So it should be like 70,000. Okay, it is 87,000. The framework I'm choosing to use is PyTorch Lightning. It is a convenient framework that I usually use to explore things. And another good, very good option is Keras. But right now I'm choosing to use Lightning. First, so to work with any framework, the first thing you should consider is the data pipeline. The PyTorch Lightning provides its own data module, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the standard PyTorch data pipeline. So um, the PyTorch actually provide a spatial data pipeline which called the image folder for educational purpose i'm going to construct my own data set and the pipeline so let me first uh, do the custom data set routine for everything so the benefits of using your own custom data loader on data set is that you can have a full control of uh, data pipeline and if you have any new ideas, like do the spatial sampling, spatial uh, arguments, and uh, any ideas, nothing can stop you to adjust your data set and the data pipeline. Okay, and uh, the AI provides a pretty good completion. Although I don't need to, I don't use the, the last one, I need a transform. So let me, um, so I already got a pill and the, uh, Torch? Do, do I have a torch? Okay. Yes, I got pretty much everything I need. So let me uh, first construct a image data set. Okay. And <laughs> I let the AI to complete with me and I'll do the modification. So it is good. Uh, well, I got a list of images and uh, transforms. I probably wish to have a root instead of um, the image list directory. So I'm going to ask it to give me a image root and the save images should be the list of PNG. Okay, good. And then, um, so this is our image, save images. Okay. I'm, I'm going to use the GPU really, really soon. Not exactly, <laughs> uh, because I'm right now I'm doing the data pipeline, and I'm getting the transforms. And uh, okay, I got everything I need. Uh, to customize a uh, data set, I probably need to a uh, super right here. I'm not sure. 
but it is a very it is very popular and you need a super here okay um to customize a data set you need to provide you can uh you only need to provide uh, two method. One is the length, the length of the data set. So we simply return our the, the length of our image list, and the next one is get item. However, um, we probably need the the transform right here. So okay, and try to do the transform. But since our transform may be a noun, I'm assuming this to be give a type hint to be passed. So if self transform is not noun, image is equal to okay. Then we return this image. So what is our transform exactly? Um. Transform is equal to transforms compo compose. So let's see the suggestion right here. Uh, we don't need to resize it yet. Uh, we'll do it sometimes later, but we don't need to resize it yet. We need to do uh, resize it to, uh, I mean, convert it to tensor. That's correct. So you can see that it convert to a tensor. And the range is be, be, become from zero to one. Uh, in general, we probably need some more balanced range. So that is from uh, negative one to one. So we do a uh, normalize. Okay, the suggestion is pretty good. It means we subtract zero point five as a mean. So zero point five to the zero, and we scale it by dividing the 0 0.5 so okay so this is our transformation so let's build our data set and let's see the uh, i usually call it ds to it's my convention to simply call the data set ds let's see a ds zero It should get the first images and convert it to the tensor in the range from negative one to one. And let's see the shape and the D type. It should be in uh, for the data type is 432. And the size is, is good uh, because PyTorch, the convention of PyTorch channel first. How about the um, D type? It should be Torch 432. Good, everything is set. However, we cannot see the image right now, so we need an in first, in first transform, so that we can actually see the images. Okay, so we have a normalize uh, the mean. We should. Uh, negative one, negative one, because negative one is going to zero, so the mean is going to zero, so it should be negative one, not zero point five. And what is we can simply put it, it is correct, but I simply put it two. Okay, then we still need it to convert, convert back to PL images. The suggestion is pretty correct. Okay, so let me inversely transform the first thing and see if it works. It actually works. So we got our data set, customized data set pretty easy. So if you are uh, more familiar with this type of thing, it should take like two, two or three minutes almost, and you can actually play with your data set. I, I, you, I always play with my data set because there are always a possibility of something went wrong. 
So maybe I even do something like, okay, try to do something like a unit test. So you can make actually make it a, a simple test or just do some assert to make sure everything uh, is correct. Something like this one, uh, but uh, no, no, it should be something like 70,000. So it is correct. But the idea is you have to have a full control of what everything you just coded. Okay, so let's make a data loader right here. So let's start to make a data loader. Um, okay, so from... Okay, so the suggestion, suggestion is pretty good and uh, Shuffle, my, we may, might need some workers to be, okay, four workers and maybe we need some persistent workers or team memories. Never a bad idea. Okay, we don't drop last, just do this. Maybe we, we should drop last. Okay. So this is our data loader. So again, uh, we can, so it has a component component complain about the mix is two okay in this system because we are using a very bare minima system so we only use two I follow the suggestion here so we can still play with our data loader so let me make this uh it iteration so because we are running through Iterated through this data loader. Um, I will delete this because um, the data loader. If you are uh, iterated through a data loader, it will construct a iterator for you. Let me first get the first batch from this DL. Okay, and. Let's see the batch is a batch work as intended. So it took really long time. Okay, so because it actually the drive is actually mounted from the network, that is my guess. So let me simply put it like um, smaller batch size, like four. Let's try this first. It still takes some time. Okay, got okay. Four, three, it, it is okay. So um, let me increase the batch size a, a little bit. Okay. So we're actually hoping so how large is the RAM? Because the whole data set is um like two gigabytes, we are actually hoping uh the the whole data set is catching by the disk catch mechanism of Linux. Because it seems like uh Reading files from Google Drive is really slow. Okay, no matter what, this, let's first get this one done. And okay, we got our batch and uh, it looks fine, but we cannot see it right now. Let me use Torch Vision to make a grid and see. Okay, we haven't import torch vision. Okay, good. But I want to change my, we need to change my number of rows to, to be more square one. And row is to be four. Let's check it again. Okay, that sounds better. So 
it's a little bit better. Okay, then we convert it back to the pillow image so that we can see it. Okay, so we can see the first batch and look like this one. So that's over my, our uh, data pipeline. Our data pipeline seems working as intended. So next we wish to um, design our network to actually train the to actually train the uh, the DC again. So uh, we provided a repo. Uh, let me go to the repo uh, GitHub TJWEI and tutorials. And you can also check other repos for the structure. So I have a DCK intro for CIVAR 10. It uses Keras. You can use Keras as well. But I'm right now I'm using Lightning. I'm going to um, translate this architecture into PyTorch. So you can see uh, what is our generator. Right here, our generator is look like this one sequential. Okay, let me copy it back to here. Yes, I'm only using one monitor. Okay, the thing is, it doesn't really work, and the direct translation is not good. Although PyTorch does have sequential but the sequential module is not a good choice as to replace a real models in PyTorch so the best way to do things in PyTorch is to do the custom uh, class definition a uh, subclassing the uh, module so let's first um, From torch import an and an, okay this one we don't need it but we need something class uh, let's call it a generator generator uh, a module okay then we need int okay so first of all we need a latent dimension let's Call the latent dimension to be 100. Uh, this seems to be a popular choice. And then we need, um, okay, so we need to get the latent dimension here. <laughs> I have to type it. I was expecting the AIs auto complete it. Let's do I get a self? Okay, yes. Um I'm will have my model here is equal to it actually has an un sequential. Okay, let me just kind of copy it. It will be a bit different but let me just copy it um first uh, we we have to we need uh to convert our latent vector into a two dimensional thing so i need a projector uh is equal to uh, and that linear okay good that okay good it is what we wish to have and uh, our activation i will always use i just call the act is equal to leaky rule okay my choice of activation is a leaky rule you can use rule as well so I'm given a name to this activation so I can change it 
for all models, for all layers at once. Okay, then I get it, this one. But I don't need a reshape. I will do a reshape later. Okay, so uh, first I need a 2D transpose and the in dimension is out is and we have the kernel size okay i probably should let it finish for me the stride is two uh it actually could convolution transpose to d i i, I guess Transpose 2D. Okay. So this is an in channel, out channel, kernel size. Because it has a lot of parameters, so it is always good to use keyword argument. But I keep the first two using the uh, unnamed argument because, uh, or positional argument, because um, almost all uh, common layers have this in channel out channel so i don't have to actually name it but for the rest of it i tend to use the full name i stride i'm not sure it's stride or strides okay padding bias i don't i i can use bias okay and but i want to use a uh, normalization batch normalization Okay, let's see. Kernel size four, stride two. Yes, I got this thing as a SM. Kernel size four, stride two, padding. Okay, so let me get a remark of the size over here. So we are pretty. Uh, this one should be a by a because the first project is convert the linear factor into a 4x4x225 four by four by because it is channel first I probably should put it in front of it and because this it has a stride 2 so the padding is 1 okay I think the padding was is good so um because stride 2 so the it's double uh, resolution into a by a and we do it again here we got something 16 by 16 and you should i used to copy and change the value but since we have ai right now we let ai to do the rest of the work uh, we have to ask it to go back up to um 32 so I actually need want it to be a little bit bigger because we have enough memory there are 16 gigabytes memory in T4 so we can it should we have a very large model without any issue but okay let me put it here okay so here we should be 64 and 32 and we need a batch normalization again um okay and finally I'll get our because we are generating an RGB image so 32 3 right here you can use a more complicated more account uh, more complicated model uh, of the networks but right now I'm using a pretty simple small network okay then we need uh, to define the uh, forward so first 
yes, we get it into a projector and it actually do the reshape right here for us. Uh, do the model and here. Okay, uh, you can see the last activation I'm using a hyperbolic tangent is because it maps from negative one to one. You may omit this activation and let the model to learn the output range. But uh, right now I'm just letting it is a pretty standard standard choice. Okay, so let me test our generator. Generator is equal to okay, latent dimension. And uh, let me have one of my this Z latent to be okay. Uh, let me just get okay. Setting is, is just fine. Need why is a warning on inverse transform because the inverse transform is gone. So let me get the inform transform back. It get wrong here right here. It should be negative one, 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 and okay, and okay. So um. Then we make a generator, get the generator, and we make a and a print the shape of the images. And then we make a grid is equal to okay. Okay, let's see if it works. Ah uh, line twelve. Need a comma right here. So let's try again. If it works, it should generate a grid of noise. Okay, good. So we got our generator seems to work just fine. So uh, I remark it because I'm not going to use it. And this one is not going to be used either. Okay. Because I, we have already tested, we think it works, but. They have some impact, so I'm going to remark it. Okay, we need our discriminator. So let's see if we can do the discriminator for us, for the AI, do the discriminator for us, and we'll do some modifications. Okay, good. Good. Mm. <laughs> 32, uh, okay, let's try to painting one. So we start from 128 by 128 and get to, okay, so, but we need um, batch normalization. Okay, good. So what's wrong? 32. I think, okay, everything seems fine. Uh, the reason that we have a um, more symmetrical design of uh, discriminator and uh, and generator is that there's one thing, one less thing we need to be worried about is the uh, training learning rate or things like that because they are symmetrical. So we don't need to adjust the 
damn it. But uh, right now we are just getting started. So after you have developed and fine tune your models, uh, adjust your models, you might want to change this architecture. It is not always good to have a symmetrical uh, architecture. Okay, let's go to the, let's see, um, what do we have so far? A by A, we probably need, we probably need one more. Uh, it go directly from there, we, we need one more. Uh, we don't need that much to two. Kernel size two, try two, and uh, go back to four by four. Okay, then we have a uh, making it to the single output. Uh, we don't get sigmoid because we are going to use the logic. Uh, okay, let, let's let's check. One kernel size padding zero strike one. Okay, seems fine. The reason that we got one by one is because the kernel size is four by four, and the kernel, um, I mean the image size right here is four by by four. The layer size is four by four. Uh, of course, we had two hundred and fifty channels. 256 channels but since the size of uh, the width and the height is 4x4 um, we have a kernel size 4x4 uh, and we have no paddings so it will have only one output so that is exactly what we wish to have and let's get the forward pass um, we need something like one that is better. We don't need this one. We don't test this one. <laughs> this one seems to be just fine. We can test it, but uh, I don't usually test it because I'll test it when I need it. So let me use the lightning to do the whole things. Uh, we probably don't have Lightning installed. So I'm going to install Lightning. Pip install Lightning. Let's go. So now let's work on my machine because it takes a while to install the PyTorch Lightning on Colab, and uh, I'm more familiar to do the coding on my own machines. So this one is the same code I copied from the notebook. And I'm working on a Visual Studio code in a scientific mode. I modify the cells here and uh, modify the, uh, the root, the folder paths of the JPEG files. So it's the same data set loader. And uh, let me verify it is working. Okay. And we have the inverse inverse transform here. Let me do the inverse transform DSV. And we got what we want to have. Um I also have our data loader. And this one is the same generator we just designed and the discriminator. It seems fine here. Okay, and we have already have the PyTorch Lightning installed. Okay, good. Now we are going to design the PyTorch module for GAN training. So let's first uh, design a Py module, uh, a PyTorch module that is uh, subclassing the Lightning module. 
Okay, so uh, this one is a little bit complicated because uh, we are using a spatial kind of training because get the, get the training of GAN is a little bit complicated than the other. Although uh, they are already have a lot of different framework that supporting the training algorithm of GAN. That, uh, again, for the educational purpose, we're going to design it by ourselves. So first of all, um, we need the initialize look the thing. And what do we need? We don't need anything. We only need the latent dimension. DIM. Okay, then that's all. I don't need to do that. Don't need this. And okay, here. Okay, then um, we have to set a spatial flag so that we turn off the automatic optimization. This is typically, uh, I mean, usually this one is the feature you wish to have in the when you trying to use lightning but in this case we are going to turn off the automatic optimization okay then our generator is control our generator and our discriminators and that's probably oh okay we need the to record the maybe the example dimension is this one is a correct dimension one latent okay it seems fine okay then we are defining our forward step so by giving any latent z here we simply we should simply call return our the result of from our generator Okay, and we need to define our optimizers because we have two model need needed to be training. So I will leave out the type hint. It's too complicated. And so we have the first Optimi optimizer is let's call it to the optimizer D to be this guy. Let me shrink the size. Okay, we are using Adam. We can use Adam W or Adam. Uh, let me choose Adam W. And I'm choosing a small beta. It is very typical to choose a zero beta one when training the GAN. You have the freedom to choose anything, but just be aware that a lot of the GAN training prefer to use a beta for uh, a zero beta. But this one is just for educational purpose. I'm using something arbitrary, uh, zero point one. If things doesn't get well, I'm going back to zero or using a default 0 0.9 so these ones are the optimizers and I should return uh, I believe it should return something like this one okay. then we are going to define our training step we don't need that much we only need this patch um, First of all, we need to retrieve our optimizer. So our optimizer D and G is self optimizer. Um, the real image is from the batch because we don't have a label. So we, we all we need is a, a batch. So let's first um, get the size of our batch. Let's first get the size of our batch. So base size is equal to real image, that size zero. Um, now we are trying to 
optimize our generator. So we start with the okay. We have for, forgot to change the, this guy. It's, it should be generator parameter. Okay, toggle the generator to be the optimizer G to toggle it on. And okay, then we get our latent random latent. So is it this okay? Batch size latent device self to my device. Okay, then um let's generate the fake image. I, I can increase the, the size of font. Now um we need the ones okay y hat uh, compute y hat first so it, it should be discriminator back images okay and we have the y1 is equal to zero once maybe you should call it once and Get the deals as well. Okay, then we com compute the cross entropy between binary cross entropy to be y hat y1. First, we're using the generators. So, when training the generators, we wish the output to be 1 because we want to cheat uh, the discriminators. Okay, let's see if binary okay it's everything seems to be fine okay so let's do the menu backwards for g loss um do the optimizer step and finally we should zero the grid and uh, then on toggle the optimizer so this one is the uh, for the uh, g training and the other part is for the d training so first of all we should toggle the on the optimizer d on and the y hat real is a real image good and the loss function seems to be fine y hat real y hat once good and detached uh, because we don't want to optimize the generator so we have to detach the fake images so uh, the back propagation doesn't go to the generator part. Then we compute the loss, the loss fake. Okay, it seems to be perfectly fine. And because we don't have a sigmoid at the end of this discriminator, so we have to use the logit version of the binary cross entropy. Okay, that seems perfectly fine. Okay, we still need to do the back propagation. Um, so our D loss is in fact this guy, and we'll do the back propagation and. Our up minus D to do the next step and the zero grade and finally we have to un toggle uh, the optimizer. Okay, that seems to be perfect fun. And the auto completion suggests us to 
log our loss because we only have the training so we just log the g loss on if we have tensorball installed the log will be uh, logged into the tensorball but right now i'm just doing a very lightweight training so i only wish we can see the loss on our progressive bar so i'm just putting the progressive bar to be true and we also want to see the d loss as well so that we can see how good our this current is and uh, fake Uh, real okay. real should be the first and the fake one okay pretty pretty good so let's see if we have any syntax error seems we are passing the syntax So now uh, we are going to define our gain data set. Uh, so our model is equal to latent dimension and latent dimension is 100. Okay. And we are setting our trainer to be lightning trainer. GPU, we are going to use okay, then that's all. Um, okay, then we train it. Fit the model with the hello. Okay, that just cross our finger and see. <laughs> Gain object has no attribute discriminator. Oh, that. that, that. A spelling error here okay so it works uh, we can actually check the we can check the loss and to see how well it is we can see that the generator loss is really uh, on the positive side on the big side on large side and d loss real d loss fake are pretty small but it runs too fast and you can see that we have a number of 86 so that's how many times I have already tried for this homework even though this is not my homework it's just a small preparation for the it's it this homework is not really important for me but still I got to adjust the model like almost 100 times so that's the idea of how many times you should adjust your model so maybe you think okay i have already trained like 20 models that's really a lot no it is not even for this kind of um easy task i train like 100 models so that's why you need a gpu if you don't have a gpu you may think okay i i need one day to train one model so i only like uh five days to go so and i have two homeworks i mean the homeworks had two parts how many times can i train maybe two or three so get the wrong idea of what is meant to be adjusting or training a model you have to adjust and train a lot okay um, right now we don't have much to see because we cannot see the image maybe you can start right here and do a, a model generation but maybe we should check the generated image at each epoch so let's if uh what uh train epoch star on train ep epoch start okay 
Oh, what is this? We don't need this one. So at here we wish to actually generate something, and so let me just copy my uh, code from other place. Pretty works. Okay, it works. So let me explain what this code does. But before that, let me import the require. From here, we import display and maybe clear output. So what here does is, first of all, I do the whatever required to do when the epoch is started. Then I generate one random latent Z uh, in a batch of 16. And I generate the fake images. Then I made a grid. So if I'm using a TensorFlow backend for logging, I can actually add these images into the TensorFlow, and you can check the image in TensorFlow. However, I'm not doing so right now. So I simply transform the grid into a pillow image, and I save the image in the log path. So you can use self.logger.logdir and get the log, um, log pass. So for example, um, let me go to a lightning log. So which uh, we are in the 86 right now. Let's go to the 86. And you can see, although we haven't already uh, saving images, but the loss functions are in fact all logged right here. So you can actually plot the loss function if you wish and see what uh, a progress of training. Uh, but now we only show the image. I'm using the epoch start because I can debug it quickly. If I'm using the untrained epoch end, it makes more sense. But at the end of an epoch, it take, oh, takes a while, maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute, but it takes a while. So if I get anything incorrectly, it very likely you cannot do it all correct in the first try. So if you put it on the beginning of an epoch, it helps you to do a debug because it do this routine on the very beginning of the training. Okay, so let's do it again to see what happens. So you can see at the very, very beginning, it generate, okay, I give you an example that we should adjust something because I really want it to be like a square grid. And I can see now it is not a square grid. So I have to adjust the setting a little bit to unroll equals to four. So let me do it again. So that was a perfect example of showing that why we should put this since on the beginning of an epoch, not the end. So you can adjust quickly. So let also explain a little bit of why I have so much model train, because a lot of model was uh, stopped very early. And also because I'm using a, a relatively faster GPU. Uh, this one is a 4090, oh, so this is definitely faster than uh, T4. So because I'm using a faster GPU, so I can do the iteration really quick. Originally, I was doing all this experiment on uh, 1080. Oh, so it is much slower than this one. So already on the first, on the end of first epoch, you can see something like this one. You can see some faces. There are a lot of places that you can make modifications. So I'm encouraging you to do
do so. Uh, the purpose of this video is to help you to getting started. After you getting started, there are a lot. Of, you can apply all your ideas to this model to make it better. So, for example, you can replace some of the spectral normalization to a spectral normalization, or uh, you can actually uh, replace the convolution transpose into a pixel shuffle. So you can see that PyTorch actually PyTorch supports pixel shuffle. Pixel shuffle is another way to do the upsampling, not just the transpose 2D. Pixel shuffle can do so. Another way to do that is using upsample. PyTorch also has an upsample. It scale up the uh, image or hidden layer specially, just like you resize your image. So it has some like a uh, different mode, like bilinear, linear, bicubic, or nearest. The default mode is nearest. We have a lot of different ways to do uh, the upsampling part. And if you like pooling, we didn't use pooling, and we didn't actually use the ratio blocks in our models, you can also use those kind of things. And you may see that um, this, we are getting something, but not perfect. And you can try something to figure out what actually happened. Uh, so let me first uh, have some words about the standard of this homework. So the grading standard. If you are getting something like this one, or this is not perfect, then you are definitely passed. Uh, let me check some older, um, say this one, I don't know. If you are still stuck in this, this one, total noise, then this one is not passing. This is not good, although you can provide your code. But uh, I don't think one is qualified as a uh, passing homework. And you are stuck in with this one, maybe, then this one is not okay. Uh, this one is kind of borderline because we can already see some faces, more or less some faces, but it's still. I was I would put one this one as a passing standard, but you definitely are aiming higher. This one is not as good, so I'm giving you a little bit something like this. This one is below the passing standard, below the bar. So I will put I will say this one is a bar. So if you get something even better, you are passing this homework. But if you are getting something like what we get on the right hand side. Uh, you will get a better score for uh, the, the homework. So right now, see, we, we are actually just writing something not uh, really finished and just quite arbitrary parameters for uh, like a learning rate uh, and uh, quite arbitrary and a simple architecture for the generator and uh, um, discriminator. We can already get something like this one. And this is only take like 10 epoch. You probably should give it a more time to to uh, to train. And we didn't even add the augmentation. You definitely should put the augmentation into your data pipeline. Left, right flipping is definitely something you should add. And you can consider adding something like um, color adjustment and contrast adjustment as long as this augmentation still producing some fast images that we might want to actually generate it. So the more is the better. But with this very simple baseline setting, we can already get something like uh, you see on the right hand side. Uh, another way you should, do, if you are starting with something like this one and don't know how to do next step, one thing you can try as to um, 
try a lower resolution. I think I probably already get some code right here. Let me simply get the code and run it and show you what I mean. I have something like uh, N3 or game 4 N3, I guess. So in this one, I pretty much use the same uh, same setting, except uh, the resolution is 64 by 64. So let me run it to the end and let's let you see the results. So the, the code is different than what I was typing. In this case, uh, let me explain it first that in this case, I put the generator outside the GAN and pass it to the GAN because at the beginning of designing these architectures, I has a, when we have a separate uh, generator and discriminator, it would be easier to to actually try it. So you can see that at the very first epoch, if we are trying to use the, the 64 by 64, it will generate something already has a variety, different, a very full of variety and looks pretty well. Um, So we can even go further to like 32 by 32. It will make the model even easier. So if you are stuck with the quality when generating image of resolution 180, uh, 28 by 128, you are free to go to resolution of 64 by 64. However, um, if you find it is still difficult to train it with 64 by 64, you can go even further to 32 by 32. But I guess uh, our homeworks only allow you to generate images with um, 64 by 64, I, I think. Let me really check the... Okay, I see. Okay, let me put the homework here. Right here. Uh, because I have stated, did I state you can either, okay, you can either, you can generate any model uh, any resolution between 64 by 64 to 128 100 by 28. So if you really have a difficulty with this resolution, you can go back, to, go down to 64 by 64. Another possibility is that you have really have some difficulty to getting a uh, GPU. Then you go uh, 64 by 64 to at least it will be like four times faster. It's still not ideal, but uh, or maybe you have a lower end uh, GPU, then you go 64 by 64. Okay, but, but you can see that uh, 64 by 64 is a lot easier to train and faster and faster. We already get a lot, or how many app bugs? Do I say it? Oh, I say it's like 30 epoch. And the quality, because um, you need to have a more advanced architecture and the technique in order to train a high resolution, like a, a high resolution image, like using style GAN or something like big GAN. But for uh, the vanilla GAN, it is really works pretty well on low resolution image, especially an image with 32 by 32 or below. Uh, but you can see that the, even with the 64 by 64, it works pretty good. So let me show you how should happen when you run a image with resolution even lower. Uh, let me go. I modify it a lot, so I'm not sure how good it is right now. But let's see. So this one is the training data set because we have raw the resolution, so it will be a bit blur. So 
that's around like two or three epoch. So it is much easier to train a data uh, image for re lower resolution. You can easily get a more variety and uh, quality. Okay. So for each epoch, it took like 20 seconds. So let, let's run like uh, five epochs. Uh, you can get much better quality if you do some adjustment to the learning rate to the architecture. Okay. Uh, for the next one, we are going to do the homework for the second part. So let me do the homework for the second part. Okay. Um, so let's see a notion. The task for the second part is to use pixel to pixel and uh, simply randomly pick uh, 1000 image or more uh, from the FFQ. Uh, actually, uh, the example I'm doing is actually using a full data set, but you can use just 1000. And you can easily train it on a CPU. Um, First of all, you, you resize the image from 128 and 128 back to a lower resolution and you wish to do a super resolution to make a small image, a blur image back to the, the original one to make it more clear. And you should show the 20 sample results and compare the target and the generated images. I'm not going to show you how to do the, the last part. I'm going to show you some modification that might be uh, applied to this code from, um, you can use the original code and apply some modifications. Uh, so first of all, um, the data set should be pretty much the same, except one thing, you have to return two images. There are many different choices. Uh, you may want to re return just one images and uh, resize the image in when training. Or you can even resize the image using a neural network. And there are definitely many different choices, but I'm giving you one example uh, that just work. So this in this approach, we are returning two images. So the first image is the original one. And the second one, we first we resize it into eight by eight. Uh, let me put it like uh, 16 by 16. The requirement is something like uh, 32 by 32, but I'm making it to 16 by 16. Uh, you resize it to 128 and 128 back, so it will you will get a blur image. Uh, but we have pretty much the same transformation, and you will get the same inverse transform. So let's see the clear image for the first one, like this one, and uh, for the blur one, look like this one. The requirement in the task ask you to resize it from 32 to 32 back to 128. The resolution of 32 by 32 is much more clear than what you get from 16 by 16. But I designed the homework uh, intent to lower the difficulty. Okay. So, um, but if you wish to use a lower 
resolution that is totally fine. And you can see that I resize the image back to 128. The reason is that it is easier to fix into the standard pixel-to-pixel -pixel framework. So we got this one because the, we use unit. So usually the unit has the same input and the same output shape. So we got this one. I'm working on the 16 by 16, but in the homework, you should do the 32 by 32. And we also have the data loader as usual. So the generator is a bit different because we are using a unit. It doesn't take a latent, it takes a image as input. So this one is should be the input and we are expecting output something like the above one. We are using a module uh, list to hold the up and down convolution layers. So this one is uh, you can see a screen if you want to mimic the little design, but this one is simply a unit. I'm using a four layer unit as an example. You should use a deeper unit for better quality. Uh, but for example purpose, I'm just using it with four layers. And this one is the forward path. The discriminator is exactly the same because it is exactly the same. Uh, for the game part, we do some modifications. First of all, we don't need to generate the V. And uh, um, we have to calculate the L1 loss, which is the M. Uh, and we have also to calculate the L1 loss also. So I'm calculating the computed L1 loss right here. Besides that, it is still pretty much the same, except one thing. That is, it is more difficult to uh, render the images, the render the generated images at the beginning of the epoch because we cannot use a random latent factor to generate an image. The input of this generator is in fact a image. So we have to take a image data before we can actually generate something. One way to do so is we pick a fixed set of images and see the result every time. So we first pick one batch, like 32 images or 16 images and the generate the result so that we don't have we don't need another data loader and uh, like a validation data set however i'm using a different approach to show the actual generated image in the training the way i do it is i record the step i believe uh I believe the lightning module has a step count. Otherwise, it will be have it very difficult to do the log. Uh, I didn't have a time to look it up, and I don't know which property it is. I simply do my own counting. So my logic is that when the step count is a multiple of 1000, I'm going to show the result in a grid. I take a look because we are already generated these fake images. So I simply take the generated fake images and display it. So that's it. So let's see the, what is supposed to happen when you do use the um, do a training. Maybe something like this one. Okay, let me run it again. I'm supposed. I, I think this is just simply because I haven't run the code yet. So at the very beginning, you should get something similar to this one. Because we are putting this uh, display at the end. 
of the first training step. Okay, so at the second 1000 step, you should get something like this one already because um, there's an L1 loss. It is kind of like a supervised learning. So it will converge very, very quickly. You should compare this one to the blur input. Oh, I, I guess we, we have some blur input above, like this one. And you should, you should adjust the amount between the L1 loss and the, the generator loss. And you can see uh, already it has something looks like, a lot it's a little bit blurry, but it looks like a human face. That is because we are training it in a kind of supervised way. So that is what you expect. It, it, uh, you can expect it when you train a pixel to pixel model. It will converge quickly to some point, uh, to some extent. It is not good enough right now, but you can still see some result. One trick is to adjust the amount between the L1 loss and the G loss. So for now, what you were seeing is, I, I believe you are only used the L1 loss because T loss means total loss. I'm only using the L1 loss. So if we add some um, adversarial loss, let's see what should happen. It will make it more difficult to converge because it is well known that the GAN is difficult to train. So if you have trouble when training, we have an option to first turn off the uh, adversarial loss and see if the whole algorithm actually work. The other option is to turn uh, down the resolution just like we did for this again. So this one is the result for getting some uh, discriminant loss. It will get longer to get converge. You are expecting more time to, uh, because gain is not easy to train. So it is normal that at the beginning it's getting worse image qualities than the um, when using L1 norm alone. But this is something you should expect it and trying to adjust. If you're getting some garbage output, then it is not normal. Okay, so uh, that's probably uh, what I wish to talk about the homework and I hope you this video can help you to get started more smoothly.